There's a new button in Photoshop that completely changes how you can work with type in your projects. To be honest, I can't believe it wasn't added earlier, but it's a little feature called dynamic text. Now this new button is found within the options bar of the type tool. So when we access the type tool by pressing T, you'll notice that we have this little T icon with a lightning bolt. This represents dynamic text. But before we talk about what this actually does, we need to understand the problems that it is now solving. In this case, I'm creating this project. To create this previously without dynamic text, we would have two different options. We could either create a project like this where we have every piece of text on its own type layer. The only problem with this is that everything has to be aligned manually and every time you resize things, it's going to adjust the positioning. That's because all of the layers are separate. If you wanted to go and align things so they all had the same margin, for example, we would have to use the ruler by pressing Command or Control R and then dragging out from the ruler to create a guide and then clicking on the specific layers that we want to move and then positioning them accordingly. Now this can start to get quite tedious as you make any changes to your text spacing, the sizing and stuff like that because suddenly your alignment is going to mess up because everything's on different layers. The alternative to this previously was using something called paragraph text. Rather than everything being on its own line, with paragraph text, we can just click and drag out with the type tool to create a selection. And when we let go, this defines a box for our type to be stuck within. I just have placeholder text enabled here, but you'll notice that I can just go and scale this box any direction and the text will go and fit accordingly within the parameters of that box. The only problem, however, is that if this box is too small for the total amount of text, you'll see this little plus icon that tells us that there's more text that is not being shown because the box is too small. Likewise, we can go and scale this box all day long and the words within it will never change in size. It doesn't change the formatting, it just gives a bounding box for the text to be stuck within. Dynamic text, however, goes and fixes all of these issues between point text and paragraph text by one, giving a defined area for our text to be stuck within, two, making sure that everything aligns equally because it's again stuck in the same box, and three, will automatically change the sizing of words within your text so that it always fits the entirety of the text box. So let's go and see how that works here. I'll just delete this type layer to paste in the text that I want here. Now with this text created, I can now convert it into dynamic text just by clicking on the dynamic text icon in the contextual taskbar or up in the options bar while the type tool is active. At first, nothing really happens, but if we click on that type layer now and adjust the box around it, you'll notice that the text will automatically change in size and scale as we go and change this text box. We can even make the text larger just by clicking and dragging out from the bottom corner. And unlike the paragraph text where the text remained the exact same font size, with the dynamic text, we have the ability to scale the text in size as well as change the width of it and Photoshop will automatically go and resize all of the words within that piece of text to make sure it best fits the entirety of that text box. Now, in many cases, you might not be happy with how it goes and automatically formats your text, especially when you want one word to look way more noticeable than another, for example. So to do some of the manual formatting, what we can do is just create manual line breaks so that certain words will go and fill the entire width of the text box for our dynamic text. For example, if I wanted stronger to be on its own line, I could just press enter there on both sides of the text. And now it's going to look quite a bit different because we're telling Photoshop that we want this word to be on its own line and therefore it must fill the entirety of the text box. We can then go and change the sizing and it will always keep the same style that we have here. Now we can further customize the stylization of this just by using some of the settings within our characters panel. For example, let's go and add some tracking between the letters of this top line here. That's going to be spacing between every letter within all of these highlighted words. Within the characters panel, we can find that right here or go to window and character to reveal it. I can go to the tracking setting right here and then click and drag over to add spacing between those characters. If it goes onto a new line, that's just because the spacing set from the tracking setting is making that text 
text wider than the text box, so therefore it must go onto a new line. But if you're not happy with that, of course, we can just bring that down and then resize our text accordingly to make that first line a little bit larger. I'll do the same thing for the bottom text here, putting in a similar value, 840, press enter, and then now we have that nice stylization to the text. I'll go and also change the font of this middle text. I'll go and use the silver northern text and we could play around with the tracking a bit as well here. And then even highlight everything and play around with the horizontal width of the text to make it stretch out a bit more. Now, once you're happy with the formatting of your text, again, we can always scale it using that bottom corner. But if you want to distort it in any way, just hold command or control. And then now you can go and stretch this text however you want and the text is going to stretch rather than scale. So again, holding command or control and clicking on those corner anchor points will allow you to do that. If you are not holding command or control, it's just going to resize the text box for you instead. I'll just undo that and then find a nice position for this text within our project. Now there are even more settings we can use to improve the look of our dynamic type, but they're kind of hidden away from us. But before we talk about that, remember to grab the free lesson cheat sheet in the description below, breaking down all the nuanced tips, tricks, and caveats when working with dynamic text. That way you can confidently make the most of this tool in your next project without wasting too much time on YouTube. You can grab your free copy in in the description or pinned comment below. Now, some of these additional settings that we don't see right away that can help us to stylize our dynamic text is found within the properties panel. While the dynamic type layer is selected, we can scroll down and there's now a dynamic text section where we can change things like the spacing of individual words here. It's not going to make the text box any larger, but it's going to space things out according to the space that's available between each word. And then also we can change the line height within the text box as well, just with this setting here. Now, what's interesting is that we now have to use this setting for the line height rather than the one inside of the characters panel, because in the characters panel, we previously had this option right here for leading, but now that doesn't do anything while we have dynamic text. Instead, we have to use the option right here for the line spacing within the properties panel if we want to adjust line spacing. Now, with that said, there's also a few few other things that are kind of interesting that don't work as you might expect while you're using dynamic text. One of them being the scaling of a highlighted piece of text. If I were to go and highlight this text, you would expect that I could go and change the font size here and it would go and scale accordingly. But you'll notice that no matter what I do, it doesn't really change in size. And that is because your text will only change in size with dynamic text if there's room within your text box for it to go and scale within. If there's not enough room and you've manually broken the lines up like I have, your text size is never going to change. Instead, you have to go and scale the text box as a whole, again, by using the anchor points around the dynamic text box. The second thing that doesn't really work as normal would be almost everything in the paragraph panel because the paragraph panel has things related to alignment and margins and things like that. Since dynamic text is just locked edge to edge within your text box, your alignment settings aren't going to do anything as well as the margin settings aren't going to do anything either. So if you have specific formatting requirements, dynamic text is not going to be the option to use. Instead, you should be using paragraph text. But with those three things in mind in terms of the line spacing now inside of the properties panel rather than in the characters panel the paragraph panel and all of its settings will not work as well as the text sizing isn't going to work as you expect other than that what you see is what you get with this text setting and it just makes life a lot easier to stylize and position our text and keep everything aligned as one unit we can always go and stylize each line individually again by highlighting things we can add those manual line breaks to make some text look more dominant than others because again if a word is by itself it's going to be forced to fill the entire width of your text box. But with that, I think it's a welcomed addition to the program. 
I'd be curious to know what you think of dynamic text in Photoshop and whether you think it's a welcomed addition or a waste of time. Let me know in the comments below and while you're there, be sure to grab the free lesson cheat sheet in the description or the pinned comment. Now, this is just one of many ways you can improve how you work with text in Photoshop, but to take your skills to the next level, there are eight useful tricks you're probably not using right now. I break down all of these in this video right here, so you can just click on that to watch it next. I hope to see you there.